Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today is June the 18th, 2020. Guys, I'm going to ask everyone, if you would, please um, turn your devices off. Um, thank you. Today is um, June 18th, 2020. It's approximately 7.03 p.m. Um, I'm going to go ahead and officially call this meeting to order tonight. We're going to ask um, Commissioner Henderson, if he will, tonight lead us in our invocation. And following the invocation, we're going to ask um, Commissioner Cowan, if he will, to lead us in our pledge. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We didn't want to bow the heads. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we come before thee with thanksgiving in our hearts. And may you continue to guide us and lead us in the way that you would help us to go. This we pray in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Um, tonight we are here for our special call meeting. Uh, tonight we're going to talk, discuss the contract uh, with Motorola. Uh, Mr. Kerr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on uh, Tuesday night, there were some uh, questions that we needed to have some clarification on. And um, so what I wanted to do to begin with was to uh, put together a few slides. So I wanted to take a couple steps back. Um, to explain a little bit about what we were looking for, um, a little bit about the history. Also, uh, our consultants, TUSA consultants, um, Dennis Ward and Dean Hart will be joining us uh, at the uh, appropriate time to go over the um, review process and the technical, uh, the, the process that was done for the um, examination of the proposals and um, the uh, to go over the information, the technical information of the uh, of the proposals um, with uh, you all, and to answer any of those technical questions. So, if so, I put together these slides. If next slide, please. Um, this is our uh, our project. The, <coughs> this is um, <coughs> pardon me, and I borrowed uh, <coughs> some of the information from our uh, from the. Um, uh, Motorola folks, um, but this is our uh, the coverage that we'll have, and you saw this the other night. Um, Ninety-seven percent reliability from the, and ninety-eight percent reliability um, on of our equipment. Ninety-seven percent re reliability inside of the uh, six dB building, which is typically a, a residential home, and then an, <clears throat> the equipment on the street would give ninety-eight percent reliability, uh, and again, both of those are. Uh, countywide, the <clears throat> areas that you don't see all of the uh, purple area in is down mostly down by the lake, and um, that doesn't mean again that we don't have coverage. It's just that it's not not quite at that um, at that rate. Ninety seven uh, percent is <coughs> pardon me is the industry um, standard. And uh, that is the minimum that we were requiring. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the some of the goals that we wanted to pursue. Um, we wanted uh, countywide coverage. We wanted to make sure that we had an ex a, uh, a team that could put the uh, do the installation uh, together uh, and put the uh, complete the project. Um, wanted to make sure it was available. To have local service support, Motorola has quite a local presence. We wanted to be able to transition from our current open sky system to the P25 uh, system, which is the new, which will be the new um, uh, system that we're going to be using. Uh, we wanted to have a 15-year support plan. Interoperability was extremely important, and that is interoperability between the agencies within the county as well as the ability to work with uh, agencies outside of our county who also have P25 uh, radios. And then we do have a number of critical buildings um, in the county. These are buildings that 
where we've had difficulty getting our radios to work. The communications between um, our public safety um, personnel inside the buildings uh, has been um, less than desirable. And then also the communication with the uh, employees inside the building and those on the outside of the building has also been very difficult. So we, we wanted to make sure that we had a system that would correct all of those inefficiencies and, and deficiencies. So next slide, please. Um, this is just an overview of the system. You see all the green spots there. We've got one red. Those, all of those green spots are the towers that will now be located on. Um, we are actually constructing eight towers that will have um, all of the uh, communications equipment on and um, some of the towers that you see here are existing towers or existing uh, sites that will be adding um, new ant uh, antenna and uh, communications equipment to. But the ability of this system will eliminate those spots that we have in the county, uh, such as uh, Porterdale, um, that is down in a bowl. Also, the FFA camp, was, which is in a bowl, um, where particularly where communications have been extremely difficult. Um, the mill is a large building. It's an old building, very much like this one, where the walls are masonry, um, and they're very thick walls. They're 12 to 18 inches thick or more. And um, so it's very difficult to get a signal there. And then at the FFA camp, we have a lot of the older buildings that were built during the 30s and 40s. Uh, and by virtue of the fact that those buildings are primarily dormitories, and we have hundreds of school kids who go to camp there during the summers, and then there's a number of meetings that are held throughout the year uh, down at the FFA camp. It's imperative that we have good communications there. Um, uh, uh, in the event that there were ever to be any kind of a disaster or, or a tragedy there that we had to rely on our public safety. We had to motor, you know, uh, mobilize our public safety individuals. And because of the fact that we do utilize the FFA camp in the, uh, during natural disasters, it has become a place for, uh, to house people temporarily during, um, uh, in uh, several of the recent uh, storm events where We've had refugees, if you will, from Florida who have utilized the fields there to park uh, uh, RVs and motorhomes. And uh, also they've used the dormitories there, sleep, sleeping quarters. And uh, we've also, uh, the kitchen area there has been used to, to feed uh, those individuals. So it's important that um, we had good coverage uh, in that area for that building as well as, of course, for all of the citizens who live down there. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, a kind of a graphic of our network. Um, the network is going to be the cent central part of that network is fiber. Fiber will be run to all of the towers. It's also going to connect the consoles at the uh, connect with all the communication <coughs> centers. Um, it'll connect the core. It'll connect the consoles. The simulcast system, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Um, but all of that will be, uh, is a part of the system and just the management of the network. And then you have your mobiles and your portable radios off to the side, which of course are not connected by fiber, but um, are as well an integral part of that whole network. Next slide. Um, this is a graphic that kind of shows you what we mean when we're talking about simulcast. Um, the simulcast capability means that when a radio is activated, that that radio signal will bounce off of more than one particular spot. So you see the overlapping circles there. Um, that is where that signal would, would be going to. So it's not just concentrated on one tower. There's multiple places. That gives you better coverage and better communications. Um, it's something that we... Um, don't uh, currently have at this time. So this gives us a lot better ability to communicate with, with uh, one another um, when the uh, officers and the deputies are in the field as well as, well as our firefighters and um, EMS personnel. Next slide, please. 
Um, we have built in redundancy. We are going to have our own core and we're going to have our own standby. Um, this is particularly important with the size of county that we are now with well over 100,000 people. And um, it's important that we're with the number of agencies that we have. Um, extremely important that we are able to stand alone in the event that there is some emergency. And again, both of those will be state of the art equipment. And um, so we now will have a, uh, a system that can virtually stand on, will virtually stand on its own. In the event that we did have a major um, impact on our core, we would be able to operate at the same uh, capacity uh, as with our, um, as if the core were there. So um, we'll be, we'll, there'll be no uh, delay and um, there won't be any lapse in service uh, by us having our own and we won't have to uh, and again, we had looked at uh, the possibility of maybe partnering with some other counties, but after some further study, um, it, we d uh, realized that uh, it would not be that great of a savings to us, and this really uh, is uh, a better uh, way for us to go because we'll be able to make, we'll be able to manage the maintenance and uh, service and all on this uh, equipment. Next slide, please. Uh, the coverage guarantee you can see uh, there for yourself. I won't go through through all of it. You'll see what the um, what the uh, commitment is um, there, and you'll see that what Motorola has um, has uh, spec'd out for us, and what we are looking at exceeds the um, uh, exceeds those requirements. So next slide, please. I mentioned critical buildings a few minutes ago. We have 62 critical building locations. Um, and then we have over 356 total buildings. Um, I mentioned the FFA. We've got buildings here inside of the city of Covington. Uh, some of our manufacturing facilities, uh, probably one that many of you are, are aware of is some of the difficulties that we've had with Takeda. Uh, that building is a, um, uh, is a very secure building to begin with. It's also um, uh, the construction on the building is such that um, radio communications are difficult inside of that building. And so, um, and there are other buildings the same. I'm not picking on, not Decatur, but <coughs> not picking on them. I'm just saying that there are, that is one example. But that's a huge building. They do store quite a bit of materials, um, some hazardous materials. And so, uh, it's absolutely necessary that we are able to communicate inside of that building. There's a lot of confined spaces there. We do, we do training uh, there on a regular basis um, with the neighboring um, fire services that we have uh, mutual and automatic aid agreements with. Um, but um, we are not able, have not been able at times to communicate inside the building uh, when our uh, on-site commander is outside of the building. So uh, this system uh, will uh, help us with all of those problems and will make it um, not only better for the personnel inside the building, but it'll make it safer for our personnel to be uh, doing going inside of the buildings to be able to fight those uh, fires or um, whatever the hazard uh, might be. Um, so you can see there's a number of those right around the city of Covington concentrated there because that is where a number of our manufacturing facilities uh, are located. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we have neighbors that are going, uh, that are currently on the P25 system, which we will be able to uh, communicate with and that we'll be able to have interoperability. There are some things we would need to do to put that into place. However, we do have that functional functionality. Uh, Walton, Rockdale, and Henry um, all are utilizing the P25 standard, um, and it, it will um, this will help us in the event that we have uh, incidents um, that uh, would bleed over into other counties, or their incidents may come into our county. Um, so it will help us to coordinate any law enforcement activities 
um, as well as uh, with any type of um, uh, structural fire that we may need help with or uh, hazardous spill, um, we'll be able to get better communications with the other agencies that would be that would be helping us. Um, I-20 is a major corridor, as you all know, and so this will uh, assist in our abilities to con to handle any type of emergency that might be related to the uh, to the interstate. Um, next slide, please. Uh, there will be a very comprehensive training program, and this is what has been uh, set up through uh, Motorola. This is what is a part of this contract, and you'll see the, the various types of training there that will be uh, on-site uh, on -site training, um, and also uh, there will be some online uh, training that's available as well, but all of our personnel uh, will have the proper instruction that's necessary in order to operate the equipment and get the the most uh, uh, get the most out of the equipment uh, that we can and to make sure that we're operating it efficiently and effectively. Um, next slide, please. This is a tentative project schedule. Now this schedule is subject to revision and all, and of course it depends greatly on there's several variables, but this was a tentative project schedule. This is uh, an early schedule, um, but it would, we, uh, the tentative closeout date would be in February of 2022. Um, it could speed up a little, it could slow down some depending on availability of, of product and depending on weather to some extent because we will be doing some construction um, so there's some variables in here, but that's that's a tentative timeline for the project. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is the recommendation that our uh, that our consultants put together for us, and you can see the um, the uh, information there. You'll see Motorola did score the highest out of the three proposals that were put together. Um, there was a technical evaluation and a pricing evaluation. And um, Dennis uh, Ward and Dean Hart with TUSA uh, are on the line with us. And I've asked them to walk you all through the review process and the, um, the, uh, their rating system, how the rankings came about. We did have, um, there were, um, representatives from from the county as well as city of Porterdale um, who are both members of the um, Board of Governors for the 911 system who were also part of the review team um, and um, and the board then um, this was voted on by the Board of Governors the Board of Governors did agree and make a recom did agree with the recommendation uh, uh, of the consultants and made that recommend and has made that recommendation to the board to um, award the the contract to Motorola. And with that, I'll turn it uh, I'll turn it over to um, uh, Tusa to go into detail on the technical detail on this our RFP review process. Mr. Chairman, I, I think I have Tusa on the line. I'm just going to hold them up to the mic and see what they have to say. Yeah. Go ahead, Tusa, are you are you on the line? Yes, sir. We are on the line. Okay, uh, we, we, you've been asked to uh, walk us through the process of uh, selecting Motorola through the competitive procurement, and here you are on the mic. Awesome. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Dennis Ward with Tusa Consulting, and also on the line is Dean Hart with Tusa Consulting. Um, give you a quick little uh, uh, recap of what has taken place. So Newton County released an RFP on December 9th for a new radio system. And then we had a mandatory pre-proposal conference and we did site visits with the vendors on January 9th. And the RFP was due on March 5th, but uh, we extended it to March 19th because of things going on with COVID. And there were three vendors that responded, uh, Communication International, JVC Kenwood, and Motorola Solutions. And so at that point, 
we were directed to start our evaluation of those proposals. And the way that TUSA scores those proposals is that we start by evaluating the technical proposal first. We ask all the vendors to, to submit a technical proposal and a pricing proposal. And we ask that that pricing proposal remain sealed until we complete the technical proposal because we don't want price to influence what we're looking at technically. And so we went through and we evaluated all three vendors and we scored them. And when we did our scoring, we scored them on a point by point basis. And there were over 599 unique things that we scored each vendor on and assigned them a, a score. And then uh, that composite score made up 70% of their overall score, which was the technical score. And then we went and we did an evaluation of the pricing proposal. And uh, when we do that, when we did that, we looked at not only just what it takes to procure the system, but we also look at what it takes for the, the total cost of ownership over a 15 year period. And we do that because a lot of times the vendors will try to, you know, lowball the price to get their foot in the door and they try to make it up on the back end. And this way it makes them disclose everything that they're going to charge you over a 15 year period. And so we went through that and uh, we then, uh, uh, completed our evaluation of the pricing score and we combined that with the technical uh, score and the vendors were ranked with Motorola being in first place with 92 per, 92 points uh, JVC Kenwood uh, had 88.81 points and then Communication International had 86.03 points the Motorola proposal was found to be uh, the best proposal they, uh, they were offering the best coverage guarantee out of all three vendors. <clears throat> Communication International and JVC Kenwood, uh, they met the coverage requirements, but Motorola was the only one of the three vendors that exceeded those coverage requirements. Uh, and in many cases, they were offering 2% more coverage than what was required of the RFP. The, uh, they also offered a three-year warranty on infrastructure, um, and Motorola also offered a five-year warranty on the subscriber equipment, which is a pretty big deal because if, if a police officer or fireman's radio uh, breaks over the next five years, Motorola is going to fix it at, at no cost to the county. Um, Motorola also had a very... Uh, uh, good frequency plan that they had put together. It was a licensable frequency plan, and they also uh, included free critical spare equipment to the county. The uh, other two vendors that submitted proposals, Communication International, um, they also had a five-year warranty, but there were a lot of weaknesses with their proposal. Uh, the design was questionable on whether it would meet the minimum coverage requirements. We also found that they did not respond to all the sections of the RFP. They even left out critical information, uh, including shelters and generators and the transfer switch that they would be offering. And their proposed project schedule was 24 months instead of the required 18 months. JVC Kenwood, um, some of the strengths of their proposal, they had a three-year warranty on subscriber devices, but uh, which we only asked for one year in the RFP. Uh, JVC Kenwood offered three, but Motorola did exceed that with five years. They also utilize a, a distributed uh, system architecture, which we found to be a strength of their proposal. But there were also quite a few weaknesses with their proposal as well. Um, they complied, but they took a lot of clarifications. They also wanted the county to purchase their critical spare parts. And we found that their cutover plan was flawed, particularly with their frequency plan and their dispatch cutover plan. So with that said, I mean, it was, uh, it was very clear. Usually these things are a little bit tighter when we evaluate them, but um, Motorola was very aggressive and uh, it was very obvious that they wanted the county's business because they went out of their way uh, with their proposal. And so our recommendation is for uh, Motorola Solutions. And with that, I'll take any questions that you may have. Thank you, sir. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions? 
Batusa. Um, Commissioner Show. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Tusa. And I'm, I'm sorry I didn't catch the names of the two individuals on the on the call. Um, you mentioned that Motorola <coughs> exceeded the requirements in the RFP for coverage. I, I'm curious how you determine that the coverage that they promise is something that we can actually count on. How, how do you evaluate that? Sure. Um, so uh, first thing, uh, my name's Dennis, and uh, the other person on the line is Dean Hart. Um, so the way that we do that is that there is a coverage test that has to take place as part of this. They're going to go around. There's actually two parts to it. They're going to drive around, and they're going to measure the signal strength to verify that, that's, that, that the signal is there as the computer propagation model anticipated. But more importantly, they're going to do a coverage test, which is going to have representatives from the services, representatives from Newton County participating in that test. And it's sort of like the, the old Verizon, can you hear me now, uh, test. And they're going to drive around and make a test, and it's either a pass or a fail. And the people that are making that determination if it passes or fails is the county. It's not the consultant. It's not the vendor. The county determines if that test passes or, fa passes or fails. And if it doesn't, then Motorola is contractually obligated to fix it to where it does pass. So at this point, um, we have not tested the reliability. We are uh, trusting that we will be able to go back and just make sure that we can validate that their reliability numbers are, or their reliability coverage is what they say it will be. Correct. We can't really test it until they build the network. Um, we are taking their word for it, but I will tell you that we have verified their design within our own propagation model and it does support it. And rarely, I mean, it's extremely rare, does a vendor ever not pass their coverage test? Right. In today's world, pretty much what they uh, guarantee is, is, is accurate. Are there other communities that have used this particular model that um, we were able to reference or contact them in terms of what their experience was? Sure, you can contact uh, for Motorola, you can contact Rockdale and also Walton counties, your, your neighbors. You can also turn to the Atlanta UASI. There's five counties that make up the UASI, and you can turn to them as well. And uh, I believe they have a Motorola system that's ex that's exactly the same one that you're going to be implementing. Commissioner Dean Hart here. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, one other one, and we just went through this process, was Douglas County, Georgia. Douglas County was a nine-site simulcast system that had to meet a stringent criteria, the same as what we put in your RFP. Um, that one just went through its testing and was validated as well. Um, Barrow County was another one, uh, uh, just to call the northern side of Walton County. The criteria that we build into the RFP, all vendors have to sign up for that guarantee. And they also have to provide a coverage criteria testing methodology that is going, that is evaluated by us and will be, would, would be tested by the county to confirm that they're going to meet the coverage requirements that they guarantee contractually. Um, I'll give you an example. It was a different vendor, but they promised a guarantee in a city in South Florida. They did not meet that guarantee and they had to add a site contractually to meet that guarantee. So those, that same criteria is, was in our RFP specifications and, and the vendors, whoever won would be contractually obligated to that, uh, requirement. And Sam, you are comfortable with that contractual arrangement. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Edwards. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and ask this uncomfortable question and, and this yes or no. Has anyone, does anyone or will anyone receive compensation 
at TUSA from Motor Road Solutions as a result of this contract? No. Sorry, you are away from the mic. Could you repeat that? Uh, no, we, we have not received any compensation from Motorola or from any vendor. We are 100% uh, uh, vendor agnostic, and we have no ties or any conflicts with any of the vendors. Oh, he, he well, said, well, thank you. Will. I, I think you said your question was, will anyone? Will. That's what you said, will anyone. No, has anyone, does anyone, or will anyone? Yeah. And he said no, I believe. Is that right? Okay. And I have no reason to believe otherwise. I just had to ask the question. I'll be asking the same about our Board of Governors too, Lloyd. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Commissioners, anyone else? Anyone else have any questions for Tusa? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Tusa. Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Did you want to open it up for anyone in the audience? Uh, or are you? Well, I had one more slide I wanted to show you. Um, this was a question that was asked the other night. If, next slide, please. The other night, uh, there was a question as to the funding. This is how it would be broken down. The 2017 SPLOS had 3.6 million uh, budgeted. We're including um, the uh, collections over projection um, of 7.8 million. Uh, the sales tax collections over projections of 2.4 million, agency participation, and this is for the local, um, the uh, cities of Porterdale, Oxford, and Covington's purchase of mobiles and handhelds, and then the final portion of that was, would come out of the annual budgets over the next 15 years for um, the operation of the 911 center. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I showed uh, that to you as well. Um, and um, so that's all, Brian, thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, uh, there's, um, I believe all of the members or almost all the members of the Board of Governors for 911 are here tonight. Um, I know that um, uh, that uh, if you would like, they're here to to tell you what they think about the system. Um, and so, uh, if you would like to hear from them, I'm sure they would. This um, is um, commissioners. Um, their presence alone speaks volumes. Of support now if you you guys want to you know i hate to drag them up here one by one but their presence alone um speak speaks volumes do y'all do y'all need to hear from them uh, mm -hmm. mr chair i i spoke um i spent about an hour and a half with chief Kreps on um wednesday all the days run together now mm -hmm. um i would like for him to come and just briefly um, tell his, um, as he, since he is a chief and since he is a, uh, a member of the Board of Governors, I would just like for him to just briefly give his perspective because I know it, initially he was not completely sold on this project and he has had a turn of um, heart. So if well, thank you could come before us. Thank you, Chief Cripps. Well, we're going to open it up for, for, for everyone uh, who want to speak in favor of this or opposing since we're going to open it up. Um, Chief Cripps, would you please come? Thank you all very much uh, for coming uh, and or allowing me to come. Um, you know, this we started this process a long time ago, and I am on the board, and I think I speak for a lot of the the board members on the 911 governors. And, uh, you know, you know, I worked up the ranks from the bottom back to the top again, and I was using the radio system that we currently have, and it, it has flaws. And, and we know why, and we're not gonna discuss that, but this system now is gonna bring us into the future. It's reliable. Um, and, you know, to answer your question where you asked that Motorola, 
I'll be honest with you. I beat them up last week. They probably won't even talk to me during this process that we were involved. Lloyd, you smile. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, we held them to the fire. We asked a lot of hard questions because several years ago, I had a female officer work for me. She pulled me in the office and said, you know, it's bad enough you make me work by myself. It's even worse you make me work by myself with a radio that doesn't work. That really hit home. It really did. And I came to y'all several years ago and asked for a tower to go down in Porterdale to help out. And it helped. But it's, it's not what we need. The system is what we need. And, uh, you know, during this process, I hammered uh, Motorola pretty hard about the money, the coverage, and they weren't the cheapest. I get that. Uh, and I own a home in, in Newton County. I'm a homeowner just like all y'all. And I hear the sheriff, uh, radio guys having, <clears throat> excuse me, issues. Uh, it concerns me. Uh, we have issues. Covington has issues. We all do. And, it, and I think it's time that we give. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Um, I think we give to the, the public safety, the reliability. Now, I've policed in other areas, and I've worked under this Motorola umbrella before, and it's a reliable system, it really is. No, it's not cheap, but anything Thanks, worth sir. anything is not cheap. So, um, you know, again, I, I, I'm not speaking for the board, I'm for it. Initially, I was against doing the RFP because I felt that we needed something quickly, and, uh, you know, the sheriff and I saw it. Uh, I've apologized because I was wrong initially. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm a grown man. I'll say I was wrong. But sitting through the TUSA proposal and when we were beating them up during the uh, process, I don't know what that process was called, but we were beating them up pretty good. And we got some really good uh, deals from Motorola. Um, and we spent all week, and it was, you know, I lost some sleep, and it, it, was, it was hard to learn, but... They explained everything. Uh, I know you had a lot of questions. I know, I know I spoke with Mr. Mason. He had a lot of questions, and I've even spoke with Mr. Marcello. It, it's something that we need countywide. This isn't for Porterdale. And even when they, you know, I would hammer them, they'd say, well, Porterdale. I said, well, I'm not worried about Porterdale. I'm worried about the county as a whole. Newton, one Newton is what it's about. So it's one radio system that's for our public safety. It's fire, EMS, everybody, police. So I'm asking you as a homeowner, as a police chief, and if somebody's worked on the road, we need a, a safe and a reliable system. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, anyone else would like to speak about the system? Anyone else? Chief? Sheriff? Good evening to all. Um, Good evening. I'd like to kind of um, address the question that Mr. Commissioner Edwards mentioned earlier about the uh, monetary, whether or not whether we will receive anything or whatever the case may be. Be assured, anytime there's contracts, particular contracts such as this, I never, I, I never. I never engage in the conversation. I stay strictly away from it, and I allow those who have the expertise to bring to the board what they feel <laughs> best for the board. Now, as sheriff, I can tell you, for many years, we have lived with the radio system. One of the things that frustrated me mostly is when there's a deputy on the road that we're having to call this deputy on a cell phone to ensure his his or her safety that has bothered me for years and years. And I think it's time now that we, the rubber is meeting the road and we need to put a system in place that uh, I can feel secure as well as all of the chief and all the rest can feel secure as well as the residents can feel secure that there's a system that will eventually work throughout the county. Um, from day one, uh, I was for uh, putting out an RF, I was for putting it out. As a matter of fact, I was so passionate about it is that I even said that I, you could take the money from my budget. I just wanted to do the right thing. Anytime you're spending money of this magnitude here, I think you need to vet it, and I think you need to do it in the most professional way and the most profound way 
and most economical way you could. And I believe that the willingness to give up my uh, part of my pot just to make sure that we had the right uh, uh, radio system and the right company to do it. When it comes to the knowledge of the radios and how they function and the functionality of the radios, I can tell you I know nothing about it. I can barely talk on them. <laughs> my concern was only to get a system that would work, and I think most of the the officers would tell you, I made the statement if it was a tin can of a string, as long as we can talk from one end to the other without any problem, I was good with that. So I want to thank you and I certainly hope that you move in the forward direction as Chief Cripps was said, yes, this costs money. Nothing comes cheap. I'm a taxpayer, I'm a homeowner, and it may dig in my pocket, but all at the same time, I'm willing to do my part to make sure that each and every last one of you, as well as those behind me and those who uh, live within this county, is safe each and every day. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Any, anyone else want to make comments? Good evening. Changing of the words. <laughs> I just wanted to come before y'all tonight and thank you for taking this into consideration. Uh, public safety has a duty to the citizens of the county, as well as the Board of Commissioners, to provide three basic services. Three services that the Board of Commissioners should provide to the citizens. That's those three are safety, security, and sanitation. And I know throughout the years the evolution of this radio system because I can honestly remember when we were communicating with a straight line dispatch to a pager <clears throat> and when we got on the scene with the fire department or when I worked for EMS, we had to communicate with CB radios on the scene because, and it wasn't up until uh, October of 1988 that the dispatch center was consolidated into a joint dispatch center. And there has really been some challenges with the radio system over the years. Uh, right now, presumptively, there's about 75% coverage in a lot, of, a lot of places throughout the county. And we're in a day and age now where you can call Ireland at 10 o'clock at night and wish a family member good night, or you can call Europe through a cell phone and have communications with them Newton County is still in a situation where we do not provide proper, adequate, safe, secure, and sanitary equipment to our first responders. It's been a liability for many months, many years now, and now we do have the opportunity, and I'm speaking as the chairman of the Board of Governors because I'm kind of in a neutral spot. I work for emergency management, and I represent, under mutual aid agreements, all the public safety agencies within Newton County. Not only am I the uh, EMA director for Newton County, I am the EMA director for the other agencies throughout the county. I do realize that this has a really large price tag, but what is the situation worth when we have a lot of individuals, uh, fire, law, and EMS that sometimes respond by themselves, and as mentioned by Chief Cripps and the Sheriff, oftentimes, many times, you had no communication with that officer, with that firefighter, with that EMS personnel on the scene. And I've been involved in public safety in Newton County in particular through fire. When we were back with volunteers, we only had three paid personnel and one paid chief. And uh, that goes back some 34 years now. So this is something that's really, really important, not only to the first responders, but to the citizens of Newton County to ensure that safety and security that we're obligated to provide to them and that uh, our elected board is obligated to provide that to their constituents as well. And I thank you for letting me call and have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Anyone else want to speak tonight? Mm -hmm. 
again, I just want to thank the board um, for allowing us a, a chance to, to talk about the radio system. Um, I've been with New County for three years now. And I'm going to be honest, the current system we've got is very inadequate. I want to echo what Chief Cripps and Sheriff Brown have said. I've been on calls where we could not call for help. Uh, if it was not for a cell phone, we could not run a fire scene. My problem as a fire chief is if I've got somebody in that structure fire and they get trapped, have to call a mayday, they can't do it. We can lose track of our personnel due to the inefficiency of the current radio system. I like at home at night listening to the guys out in the field. A lot of times, um, you know, I'll get up and run these calls because they're so taxed, they can't get out. Um, the battalion chiefs or the incident commanders trying to get help and they can't. Um, and I'll be talking to them on the phone and then talking, trying to get mutual aid or making sure we get other equipment en route to the scenes. Um, I've been a part of the, well, the RFP committee selecting our um, consultants. Um, I think we did a great job and I want to commend TUSA because I think they did what we asked them to do and they have explained and I'm going to be honest, I'm like Sheriff Brown. I do not know a lot of that radio lingo that was in that and TUSA was very informative to me as the fire chief but also a member of the Board of Governors answering those questions. Um, I really enjoyed sitting on the, the board uh, along with the county manager. Um, uh, Chief Cripps, uh, Ms. Trudy, um, in the meetings with TUSA um, before we ever actually met with Motorola. And again, um, getting back to Chairman Edwards' deal, you know, we have not taken anything, got anything, you know, monetary to pick Motorola. We're working off the uh, advice of our consultants and the meetings we had, um, and I'm going to be honest, Motorola was cream of the crop. They rose to the top. Um, now, I worked for 38 years in Rockdale. And to be honest, the system we're going to is what I'm used to, a reliable, workable system. I worked 38 years with Motorola equipment at Rockdale. Um, the interoperability, I mean, uh, our radios, just a turn of a knob. I could talk to the Sheriff's Department. I could turn another knob. I could talk to our public works. Just Monday afternoon, we had issues. Uh, when that hailstorm come through, we had multiple calls. We At one time, we probably had 50 calls holding. We didn't have people to send. But we could not communicate with our roads and bridges department. Um, I know that uh, Director Malcolm, he had a radio that we could operate on one channel. And we were trying to communicate with him. But then he'd be in certain parts of the county that the current system wouldn't work. Uh, but I. I know that at Rockdale, we didn't have that problem. We could go to Channel C, and we could talk straight to anybody uh, in roads and bridges. Uh, <clears throat> I support this um, uh, new system, uh, and I just ask y'all to you know, really look at it because uh, I know that Motorola has, you know, they've worked hard, and I think they're going to give us something that we can rely on a whole lot better than... Uh, what we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to speak? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How are y'all? Great. How you doing? Um, I don't want to just come up here and just repeat what everybody's saying, but um, coming from a dispatcher's point of view, sitting in that radio room when we can't get in contact with these units in the field, it is it is heart wrenching just sitting there knowing we're helpless and can't make contact with them. You try to contact their cell phones, and a lot of times the cell phones don't work in areas of the county, so you're sending other units out to them, taking up resources that um, you know should be going other places. So that's just. And that's just kind of what we deal with at work um, a lot. And not to beat a dead horse or anything, but you know, our current system, it was underfunded and it was underbuilt. 
Um, this new system will give us better coverage, better interoperability, um, more affordable radios because they will be P25 and we could choose from any vendor to buy radios with the new radio system. Um, I think Lloyd went over kind of everything that was included in this new system. We'll have um, 11 sites, six channels, it'll be a simulcast system, just better technology, new technology coming out. And the P25 just makes it, makes interoperability even better so we can talk to other surrounding counties and even talk to the units within our county a little bit better. Um, so not to bore you with any more of that. <laughs> I do just want to mention that um, SUSE has been a great resource. They've saved us some money. Um, they've been a very, um, they're very knowledgeable. They've been a great guide to us. I just want to make sure that we um, look at um, keeping them a part of the team throughout the building of this um, radio system. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, we'll just say we um, that um, I did get a, a couple of calls um, today. I, I have spoken with uh, the mayor of Covington, and I know they support this. I see he's back there today. I see uh, Chief Cotton, and I see the, um, uh, Scott also is back there. Also, I did get a call from um, today and got a call from um, the mayor of Porterdale. And she wanted me to relate to you guys that she is definitely in favor of this. Um, so I just want to make sure I put that also on the record as well. If we don't have anything else, Mr. Kerr McCall, oh, I'm sorry. Who's who going to go first? Commissioner um, Schultz. As was mentioned, um, I think it's important that we have TUSA ongoing. Do we have any kind of a proposal from them in terms of what that uh, what that scope of work and what that cost will be? Yes, I did receive a proposal from them, and I did, um, for purposes of the total cost of the project, or uh, I did include that in here um, in those numbers, and it was an additional, uh, roughly an additional three hundred thousand. Um, so I did include that in those numbers so that it reflects that. So when, <coughs> assuming uh, if there is a motion made to, uh, to approve this, uh, we'd want to make sure that we utilize the numbers that are in the contract as opposed to the ones that I had on the slide because the slide does include that additional 300000 But yes, um, that money is included. We still need to review the proposal and have discussions with TUSA further on that. But So that would be a separate... Um, that would be a separate... Um, at a separate day. Yes, and that would be an amendment to their current contract, assuming we move ahead with that. But we're not going to vote on that tonight. No, you're not going to vote on that tonight. But <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mason? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a couple questions that I just want to put out there for the record. Um, and I guess this may be a question for either Lloyd or Sam. Um, we talked about Motorola having 11 sites. Um, will there be a necessity to ever add any additional sites? And if so, how much would that cost us to add any additional sites? I can't answer that. Um, Sam, are they still on the line? Uh, Ryan? Okay. Um, I, I, I really can't. Oh, Jason. I asked that in the uh, in our RP meeting last week. Oh, okay. They said basically they're going to add additional So, so let's make sure everybody get a good understanding on that. So if there's more um, development of in infrastructure throughout the county, there may be a need for that or... It, it depends if the road is a yeah. and people and structure. Yeah, okay. But if you have to find out a way to build it, they built it for a 15-year model. Okay. I ask them that over and over again. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, I also had another question. Um, we talked about, Lord, you mentioned um, having the capability to communicate with other counties like Rockdale, Walton, Walton Henry. You know, they already utilize this system. Um, is there anything uh, or ha was there anything stated that there would be a cost for possibly maybe regional servers being set up? So for us to be able to communicate with those other counties that already have the P25, is there a cost incurred for us later on down the line to be able to communicate with those other counties? Or is that something that's already in the contract that that wouldn't be an extra fee or an extra cost for us? Um, there are a couple of folks from um, Motorola here. I know Howell and, and Clay. Clay, maybe you can answer that. I know we have interoperability. Um, and I know there has to be some adjustment. Maybe I'm not sure what the technical term for that is. Um, but I know that we can communicate with one another. Hello again. Um, would you mind asking the question again? Sure. Um, well, there are other counties that currently utilize the Molarota P25 system. Yes, sir. So if we decide to go ahead and go with this particular system, will there be an additional cost, for example, for us to be able to communicate with those other counties like Rockdale, Walton, Henry, setting up some type of regional server um, where we communicate with them, is there going to be an additional cost to us as Newton County? The cost for that is already built into the price that you have. So the consultant wanted to make sure that you had the pricing included to be able to communicate with Henry, Rockdale, and Walton <coughs> County, the three surrounding counties that have the same technology that you're considering tonight. Okay, so great. No additional cost there. Uh, and then I did have one last question. Yes. Um, when it comes to system upgrades, we know that technology changes all the time. Yes, sir. And so over the next eight to 10 years, I'm sure there will probably be something that we'll have to upgrade. Yes, sir. Is that cost already built into the current $19 million or will there be an additional cost when we upgrade eight to 10 years from now? So that was another thing that was required in the RFP that we include a 15 year total cost of ownership. So once the initial system is built, it's accepted, then you go into a three year warranty period. So if you saw the slide earlier um, that was presented, there was an 18 month build out. So assuming we start in July, um, I'm bad at math on the spot, but uh, it takes us 18 months uh, to get to final acceptance on the system. Everything's working as it should be and tested and vetted by TUSA Consulting at that point. They give you the go ahead to begin operation on the network. Um, then you go into a three year warranty period. So during that three year warranty period, you're covered for maintenance and upgrades. So there's no additional operational expense for the system during that three year period. And then for an additional 12 years beyond that, you're in the post warranty. The pricing for the post warranty is in that that will include daily maintenance of the system, something breaks, we fix it, uh, and those upgrades are covered in that as well Great. for that period of time. Thank you. You're welcome. That answered my question. I'm great. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just really glad that we were able with this system to get the, uh, the sheriff and get the mayor of Covington and the mayor of Portel and, and several other in our very intelligent employees together to come together to say that, hey, we've got a system that we can work with. And, and that just makes me feel good. Uh, for years, as, as what you have stated, Sylvia has stated, we didn't have the coverage that we need. And now I think that we're, we're heading it in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else? Lord, if there's nothing else, I'm gonna ask for a motion. No, sir, I have nothing else. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Um, guys, I seek a motion tonight. Would y'all like Sam to, Sam to state the motion? 
Please, Sam, would you please state the motion? <laughs> so the, the proposed motion is a, a motion to approve uh, the contract with Motorola for the 911 radio system. Um, I believe it's in your packet. For for a total cost of nineteen million five hundred and fifty three thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. Can I get a motion, please? Can I get a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve that. Thank you, sir. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Cowan and second by Commissioner Mason. Um, any more discussion? All in favor? It passes five to zero. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Guys, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call for a quick recess. Um, I don't normally do this, but I am tonight. I'm gonna call for a quick recess, and this is not. This is not mandatory, but I'm gonna ask if you guys, if you don't mind. I know we're practicing practicing uh, social distancing. But I'm going to ask if you guys don't mind, would y'all take a picture with the commissioners, please? Hey, guys, we're going to go back in and go back in the uh, session right quick and make sure that we have the right motion. We're going to cast that motion again. Uh, we're going to change a, a little language in it. Okay, apologies everyone. Um, the, the version that some of you have in your packet is not the final, final, final version. So I'm going to uh, request that there be a motion, a, a revised motion to uh, approve the contract with Motorola for the 911 radio system uh, in the amount of $19,553,970 as circulated by legal counsel at 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Motion. Thank you. As circulated, that's what we're adding. And second. Thank you, sir. It's been motion uh, by Commissioner Cowan and second by Commissioner Mason. Thank you, guys. All in favor again? Thank you. It passes five to zero. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, next is um, item number five uh, discussion and consideration of security. You want to go ahead and go ahead and take this Sure. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, as stated on Tuesday's meeting, um, this contract with Cornerstone involves a bid protest and thus potential for litigation. So I would request executive session on that, on that basis. Thank you, sir. And we will be taking a vote when we come out. We will be taking a vote when we come out. I seek a motion that... Oh. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards. Yes, Second by Commissioner Mason. All in favor? <laughs> when executive session. A motion that we move back into our regular our special call meeting it's been motioned by commissioner edwards and second by commissioner schultz that we move back into our regular meeting we are back in our meeting um commissioners um i seek a motion please commissioner schultz mr chair i make a motion to reject all bids related to um the item on this agenda and issue a new procurement in the form of an RFP. And that, and that item is the cornerstone. Yeah, yeah. cornerstone. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if that was the cornerstone. Yeah. Who second? Commissioner Edwards. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Edwards uh, that we reject this, that we reject all, all bids. Um, all in favor? passes five to zero it is rejected um i seek a motion that we adjourn second. <laughs> who second uh, all right is it motion by is it motion by commissioner uh henderson i'm sorry mr kerr yeah i was just i just wanted to say before we leave, thank you all for the radio oh yes sir um is it 
I know it. I know it, right? Radios, consoles, <laughs> towers. I know it, right? <laughs> it's been motioned by Commissioner Henderson and second by Commissioner Cowan. All in favor? Uh, we all stand right. adjourned. Thank you.